we are very dependent on the GPS, so of course it's an American technology. Europe cannot do this, but Europe can do satellite development. After the war started, everybody understand, okay, if the United States step out, what we can do by our own? Urgency from the war is uh, understanding that space become more commercialized. Because now it's coming with satellites, with communications, with reusable rockets. After uh, maybe five years, it would be data center development. I know also we are very dependent on the SpaceX. Hi, and welcome back to Merrill Talk. Today we have Igor. Welcome back, Igor. Thank you very much for having us here in Zurich, uh, where you live. I think uh, our audience are very curious to know more. We discuss a little bit uh, about more the, the context at the moment. I mean, a lot of tensions at the moment, I would say, on the, on the Eastern Front of Europe. But now I wanted to discuss with you, Igor, because I know one of the specialty is telecommunications. And I think uh, you spoke about the GPS. We are very dependent on the GPS. So of course, it's an American technology. I know also we are very dependent on the SpaceX. I know uh, Ariane was one of the best uh, launcher. But how you see Europe at that moment? Because telecommunication is key and it's still on the end of the Americans. But how you see uh, Europe going forward to be capable to be more independent on the telecommunication side? Yeah, it's quite important things, especially for and, uh, not only GPS, but also Starlink solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, Starlink bring on, the, on the orbit about 6,000 uh, of uh, satellites and they have quite uh, slow latency mm -hmm. to produce. And uh, Europe still rely, not only Europe, Ukraine much more rely on this case. And mm -hmm. uh, we have also some initiatives and projects which we consider also with uh, European industrial groups. It's like uh, alternate uh, space development solutions. They want to create some uh, enterprise networks in, into the space for the Europe. And it would be only specifically for government's purposes and military mm -hmm. purposes. Sometimes it could be also available for enterprise solutions, which requires uh, these things. But uh, it's al always complex uh, approach. So you need to have manufacturing for satellites. You need to have manufacturing for reusable rockets, which can bring, or you need to rely on the United States. And uh, in, in, co in, in complex view, uh, it's quite extensive industrial development. So that's why industrial groups are interesting to moving into the space because it's not easy to come up as in software development startups or AI solutions mm -hmm. and they c can grow quite uh, with small teams and variety. You still need heavy capex investments on this and industrial basis. That's why industrial groups are interesting to explore more and more solutions in the space. And once, and we have uh, in Spain company PLD, Arian, what you was mentioned in mm -hmm. um, Arian, uh, in 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 France. There is some in UK, uh, in, in in Germany. I will have also presentations for for this company. So it's come up. It's still quite later razor than United States. United States much more ahead. And if you mm -hmm. take uh, SpaceX with Falcons, which are uh, can bring really uh, commercial space stations on the orbits. Uh, in, uh, Europe cannot do this, but Europe can do satellite developments, and it's quite important things to to have less uh, reliable. And step by step, it could be also developed some by, by background to more more large scalable solutions to build in Europe also. Okay, so you are quite positive, and you think uh, Europe have the capacity, the industrial capacity here, and it's very important for our audience to face this challenge be as we discussed previously on the video you've been thinking europe is too dependent of its suppliers now it can have its own suppliers i mean inside the eurozone without uh, using external uh, suppliers and you think um, there is a capacity but as you said previously the research and development represent three percent and sometimes europe has a problem to be more pragmatic in the way to deploy. You think there is a, a little bit of a waking call here for European industrial? Because you are speaking quite often with industrial uh, base in Europe. And how, how is their feeling? How they see going forward? They will accelerate? How, how they, they will face this challenge? The Europe uh, don't 
so why we have so much delay in developments? Previously, uh, majority of developments was from commercial space, uh, co from, from commercial companies in the United States. And mm -hmm. if you have some uh, determined entrepreneurs like Elon Musk uh, who want to build these things, it's okay. They, they give him space, they subsidize him and, and so on. In Europe, uh, Europe just looking around and don't have so much demand for this. They say, okay, they can play around with the space. We have our own solutions with, uh, in, in, in um, responsibilities of the NASA NASA, but we don't have so much uh, demand for this right now. Mm -hmm. After the war started, everybody understand, okay, if the United States step, 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 step out, what we can do by our own? And mm -hmm. this is start, starting like waiting, uh, wake up call for the Europe, and Europe now, now starting to figure out. We spoke with one of the companies in uh, in, for example, in Spain, they are much more advanced in reusable rockets, and they say we okay. we, we cannot raise money six years in Europe. We, we for us it's much more easy to go in uh, Middle East, in mm -hmm. Oman, in Japan, in Japan or somewhere, rather than in Europe. We cannot raise. Uh, we we have some grants here, 15, 30 million, but. To, to, to scalable, you need much more capacity in this case. And uh, we say, okay, it was six years ago, now we have the different situations, well, now we have interest from industrial groups, there is also support from the governments, and we need to move forward quicker there. Mm -hmm. If we see the um, uh, company on the stage of uh, industrial development, so they, they still need to have uh, permission, permit, they still need to have uh, validations feasibility, they need, still need to have some EPC, environment procurement constructions reports. If they, they are ready to uh, accept uh, in, uh, institutional funds, so we are happy to move in six weeks for due diligence with our partners, with, with our side, mm -hmm. to capitalize as more as we can, because we want to grow it much more quicker here. So you, from, from your perspective, because often, like you, you are the the interface between the industrials and the investor who will put money. Yeah. So we, you, yeah, yeah. we act like uh, on advisory side, like marketplace, where uh -huh. institutional industrial groups can connect with uh, asset owners or founders or teams of the companies. Mm -hmm. And you see, there is a, like also a change on that side. You see, like the inv these investors have more interest to invest on a European, uh, and how, how you see this thing? So you think there is more interest? Uh, we see approving, for example, one of the, our clients, one of industrial groups, quite big in, in Europe, mm -hmm. they have approving from the board that they are ready to uh, capitalize up to 15 billions into industrial developments of space defense technologies here in Europe. So they have approving from the board that they are, if they see projects which can Pass due diligence by specific criteria, they can deploy up to uh, in, in six weeks uh, capital into this project. Okay, so you see also now the board is more active and uh, maybe the board was more conservative in the past because maybe the, the board members in US are more active in this way. So you see also a certain change here from the board members to say, okay, we have this money, we are ready to deploy. Uh, they see uh, it's all. It's urgency from the war. It's uh, understanding that space become more commercialized. Previously, uh -huh. it was only on the government side, and nobody understand how to do business with this. Uh, now, uh, uh, SpaceX, nobody knows what is going on with revenue, but everybody understands that it's profitable on, on, on revenue growth. And uh, everybody understands it could be commercialized and it could be more demand on this. Mm -hmm. And for industrial groups, it's uh, also opportunity to prepare background for space industry because now it's coming with satellites, with telecommunications, with reu reusable rockets. After uh, maybe five years, it would be data center developments. We have one project, pilot project. They want to build uh, small capacity in, on the orbit because uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you build data centers uh, in space, you have uh, energy sun uh, um, available uh, all, all year round. So it's not, not like on the Earth when you have only half <laughs> of the day. <laughs> and you have much more um, better environment condition for the cooling. It's not uh, like on the Earth when you mm -hmm. need to, with heating solutions. So there is some person, there is still a figure out with the feasibility how it would be on the acting really. But one is 
one is figure out with pilot projects, it would be much more bigger and solutions. And industrial groups, uh, they see these potentials and they want to prepare uh, background to be uh, in the market. It is also market developments on, on the way. Mm -hmm. So you see like, it used to be more like a military space. Now you see more like a more commercial. So a lot of people seeing space like a really a place to, to do business. Yeah. Uh, when it was not the case before. Yeah. And you think the Americans have been already a pioneer on that side, seeing like there is already potentials. And I think obviously uh, Elon Musk was with SpaceX, one of the pioneers on that side. And you see it's moving also in these directions in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Previously, Europe was just uh, passive observations and mm -hmm. uh, still produce, proceed with uh, research uh, of the space so they we have here in ETH also there is a lot of space uh, uh, investments and developments but mostly on the research side there is nobody do business to, too much here on the space J just for our audience ETH is the uh, polytechnic of Zurich yeah yeah it's a pretty well known uh, university which uh, a lot of capacity to mm -hmm. to, to, to bring uh, it's called like spin-offs when some projects uh, financed by uh, university and once they are becoming more mature they are moving from uh, transfer technologies from the university to the venture capital investments and mm -hmm. then it's moving to industrial groups and we want to make this smooth transition sometimes uh, to recognize on early stage somebody who who is uh, uh, developing some interesting solutions and then move them step by step in venture capital investments and then in industrial groups but it's long past it's 10 years sometimes 15 20 years and uh, if we're talking about uh, industrial ready um, uh, startups or companies they already done have done a lot of work before it was maybe 10 years six years of developments and mm -hmm. then now they come into the stage when they want to raise so 100 millions or 200 millions of investments to 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 build this industrial base for re really productions certain productions of capacity so you see also now that you see there is more bridge between university and the industrial because you're talking about uh, Zurich and the ETH, which is worldwide known. But you see outside, for example, of Zurich uh, and Switzerland in the way, do you see also the other school going into the directions to collaborate with industrial? Did you have experience that? No, you can probably know about EPFL, yeah. not so far from you. Yeah, yeah, but it's still in Switzerland, it's Lausanne, <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, there is in Germany uh, the research and development. Maybe there are, uh, maybe there are less um, focus on commercializations. This is major problems when you uh -huh. talk with them, is there are more academical solutions. So you can make research for research, pretty long time, <laughs> 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, and it would uh -huh. be without products, without any solutions on the market. Mm -hmm. Research for, for research, it's okay if you are in the theoretical field. But if you're moving, for example, in some pro kind of product developments, productions, mm -hmm. markets, it, it's a completely different approach. And sometimes people from academical review and people from startup industry or growth uh, venture capital, they have completely different goals and purposes and priority what they uh -huh. need to do but you think it will be change in the future or it's coming it's coming it's still uh, sometimes it's uh, when we speak with uh, academical solutions they are in, in kind of bubble because they don't <laughs> uh, want to observe what is going on on the market but uh, they uh, they have also demand from uh, from investments that we need to have more transfer technology we need to see mm -hmm. more real products we need to we have solutions to support our, uh, you are on early stage and they starting to shifting to to this mindset uh, this is major problems of uh, Europe, maybe more in, uh, compared to the United States. Entrepreneurship's uh, mm, uh, willingness or entrepreneurship's uh, taking risk. The United States have the, uh, wild ideas. They bet on this idea. They fail 10, 10, mm -hmm. ti ten times for this and in 10, 11 times they have succeeded. 
in Europe, if you bet for <laughs> something and fail, okay, you don't, you, you already you are shy to come uh, back, yeah, out of so, so society, nobody respects you, and so on. Uh -huh. That's why it's maybe also shifting on on the um, mindset of solutions, so how you how you develop. If you're ready to take more risks, if you're ready to take small bets in five, ten times, and eleven times, it's working for you. But it's cover all all your efforts previously. Mm -hmm. It would be uh, this is these things we need to learn from United States. United States need to learn another thing from Europe with renewables, with energy solutions, with uh, transitions and so. So, so you because you spend some time in US, so huh? yeah, we have a lot of uh, partners in United States and. Uh, even even one market, for example, data centers development in in Europe and United States, they have completely different approach how it needs oh. to be done. Uh, even the same uh, hyperscalers, developers, how they operate in United States and how they operate in Europe, it's a little bit different. It's good. Yeah. It's probably um, for audience. We will uh, we will do the probably a video on that side, on the data centers. I think you need to to stay tuned uh, with us. Um, I want to thank you again, Igor, for your time. I think we will do uh, another video because I think it's full of insight. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Igor, and see you soon. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, see you soon.